We record everything live, uh -huh. um, which is why I was really interested in this seminar. Uh -huh. Because, um, you know, getting the drum sounds down, minimal amount of mics, I don't have a whole lot of yeah. channels. Sure, sure. And getting it live in the room to where it sounds good. I, I can always learn more about that kind of stuff. Absolutely. As many of you, or most of you, or all of you probably know, that it, it's recording anything, and especially drums, is that it all starts with a good sounding instrument and a good sounding player. So, uh, and a good sounding room. So, um, everything else that we're going to be doing today can be used, you can do anything if those things are there. Um, not everybody has access to a room like this or a kit like this, but let's see if we can agree on a reasonably good drum sound. taking that out of the equation because that will change depending on your space, the instrument, and the player. Um, and, and what we're going to be working on today is using one mic to get a balanced sound and how many different good balanced sounds we can get using one mic. A couple of ways to use two mics. Three, two or three different ways to use three mics and about half a dozen ways to use four mics. Um, I picked the SM57 because it is sort of uh, the least, or the most affordable sort of legitimate pro tool to use. Sure. I, think it's, I think it's very educational to hear how the sound changes, not right around the drum kit immediately, but how it changes in the room in general. Because regardless of the, whatever room you're in, and especially in a room that's not great, you have to teach yourself, oh, God, I just need some more low end. I know if I put the mic in that corner, I'm going to get that 80 hertz that I'm looking for. Those kinds of skills and tools are like the most valuable thing that you can learn using your space. So, I mean, this room is, is very balanced. But you will notice as you go like back to forward that the, the fundamental of the kick drum will have, you know, be slightly more, or the frequency will change depending on where you are in the room because it depends on where it's reinforced. Uh, mostly low frequencies is about the only place you're going to notice that in, in here because it's diffused, heavily diffused. So. of what is changing in the room as you move around. Uh, and that's the beginnings to understand location of mic. Because it really is not what it is, but where you point it. Let's start with the, the notion of trying to capture this instrument with using one microphone. And the challenge with this is the sound comes from so many different places. If you try to treat each one of these things as a different instrument, uh, you are setting yourself up for years worth of headaches. Um, because you can make this sound awesome, and you turn on that mic and it sounds like crap. And you can make these two things sound awesome, you turn on that mic and it sounds like crap. From the audience perspective, where do you think a good place to start would be? to place one microphone. Right of the kick, face towards... Right, right from my view? I would think somewhere around here, uh -huh. kind of trying to get the kick, snare, hi-hat. Okay, 
Okay. Yeah. So yes, uh, I'm gonna pull it out just so that we can sort of. I mean, exaggerate it. Balance it because of the snare and the kick right. volumes and stuff. But very good. good idea. Uh, any specific height? I guess would be right around snare height. Okay. I'm trying to, you know, keep it a little bit in front of the kick to try to get, you know, yeah. some of the... F yep, yep, all good. Any other suggestions? Yes, Max. Um, behind the kit, um, about butt high. Butt high, okay. So that's going to be, you know, just under the level of the floor tom or the um, snare drum. Uh, yeah, generally center... Of the kit and have to move it a little bit to find out where it yeah out. right so so essentially uh you know a butt mic it's literally what it's called um so behind the drummer at a couple of different heights these are all really really good ideas anybody else I was just gonna... yes i um i would if you would have asked me this question before i would have never said this in a million years but by walking around the room uh -huh. When I walked by your kit when you were playing, I was standing about here. Uh huh. And I, the only reason I, the, the height I would say about five and a half feet only because okay. that's where my ear was. Right. Uh, I like the fact that I could hear the, the beater, the smack yeah. of the drum a little bit. Okay. I didn't get a chance to really listen to whether or not I could really get the floor tom and these, these cymbals, but I think okay. they would come through. Sure. Know. This is why it's so important to use these first, and then you use the thing in between them. Um, I just, I can't, I can't stress it enough. Let me, let me tell you the reason why I'm doing this is, is because I wish to hell somebody had taught me this when I started out. It would have saved me years of agony and thousands of dollars in microphones and crap that I really didn't need, especially with low frequencies. Uh, you have to include the distance to the floor as part of your calculations. If I've got a mic over here this high up and I'm getting the kick drum, I'm also hearing the sound going boop, boop, along with boop. So this distance is going to reinforce certain signals and cancel out, uh, reinforce certain frequencies and cancel out other frequencies. So the height of the mics makes a huge difference when you're using few mics. We're going to try one and out. And we had one, it's going to be. Uh, so you were thinking somewhere in the height of the snare drum? Right? Yes, yeah, maybe a little higher than the snare, but that's an <coughs> idea, yeah. Okay. Kind of. I usually try to point it, you know, towards the kick or somewhere in the middle. Okay. In that range. Well, come over here and point it. Well, you got it. Okay. <laughs> That's generally the idea. Okay. And we had one. It's going to be directly behind. How many? You want, you want a couple of shorties? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, we'll just, I want to keep them all the same so we can move them. John, did you bring stuff you want to play to? Man, I'm, I'm good with um, whatever kind of mid-tempo beat. Okay, you I can just, me. I can just, I'll find a song or some sort of T-Rex kind of deal. All right, we'll find something. So, we're not talking about working with these in concert yet, currently. We're talking about these as different locations for one mic. But, it's a very interesting sound, and it's a good way of evaluating Tom sounds. So, that's primarily what we were talking about.
So let's talk about what we're hearing. Uh, four pretty distinct, pretty different uh, perspectives on not this, not always the sound of a specific part of the kit, but also the feel of the drum set. Okay, so observations. What do you like about that? What don't you like about it? Kick here sounds great. Yeah, kick is very snappy. Yeah. Yeah, lots of nice snap on the kick, and the snap got a, a nice roomy ping to it. Snare seems loud. Over there. It is. <laughs> It's the closest thing to the microphone. And that's what we were talking about over there. Right. That was the only thing about Which that spot, good. man. How much distance so, do we need to, to, to get, the, get, okay, the, so, get more of that butt vibe? And... Right. Well, okay, so some of this uh, would be uh, my suggestion in a situation like this would probably to move it away from the hi-hat. Away from the hi-hat, okay. And a little bit away from the snare drum. Mm -hmm. But... Not to the point where you aren't also sort of seeing the snare drum. And I think at this distance, we don't really have to go uh, to the floor. Uh, a little bit lower will be good because it will reduce some of that cymbal phasey issue in your you hearing. You can see every component of the kit. You can see every component of the kit. Having one exactly. This is quite often one of my starting points. Right here, you have plus 180, minus 180. Yeah. So as that goes past the microphone, you literally have a phase inversion. So <laughs> pull it out, and that you get you know, it's less <coughs> obvious. Tilt it a bit so it's primarily one side, it's less obvious. Above it, it's less obvious. Um, but then the symbols have the drums. But anyway. Mike four, position two. So not a huge difference, yeah. but but it's uh, it's a little bit more balanced, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that the uh, it needed the least amount of change, I thought too, though. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's crisper. Yeah, it's crisper. That one mic over the kick drum was enough to pay for the whole class because right? <laughs> I could add that to my overheads, and oh my god, just the possibilities. Of That's it. awesome. Cool. Cool. I'm gonna grab another cup of coffee. Yeah, go ahead. All right, yeah. Just a couple magnitude. In there?
So, your goal run. Number one, I've used this setup successfully on a lot of records. The rack tom sounds really good on that one. Yeah, typically what I would do in this particular case is uh, I would you know, probably take an <coughs> Omni, stick it in that location, <coughs> and but whole kit is there. Sounds in there, symbols are down. Yeah. And it's not, it's a close sound. So if I, uh, The only time I will do an EQ yeah. is to give you an example of a working position that can be tuned for whatever it is that you need to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're achieving all of this. Now we can talk about uh, using position and tone, and that will happen 